It's time for the Europa League 2, or the Europa Conference League, if you want to give it its proper name. Today, it is going to be Basel of Switzerland and Ural of Russia. Hello and welcome back to Building a Nation with Latvia. Building a Nation in the Europa Conference League in this episode. We're into the group stages. We've already played one game as well, and that game's actually gone pretty well. Away from home against FH of Iceland, we win this one 3-1. Zavs, Taihi and Diaby with the goals all in the first half. We did concede in the second half, but we managed to pick up the three points. We've also played a lot of football in terms of league matches. I say a lot, we've played four games. We've won two, we've drawn one, and uh, yeah, we've already lost a game as well against Ventspils. They seem to beat us a lot, don't they? Ventspils have beaten us five times, and I imagine... So most of them actually are fairly recent. That's not good. Anyway, in terms of the league table, we are currently at the top of the table alongside Valmira and Le Paja, who are all on 13 points with the exact same wins, draws and losses record. We've obviously got a much better goal difference because when we win, we normally win by about five goals. And finally, a little bit of transfer business joining our arch nemesis. I guess it's, that's what they are now, apparently. Jean-Stefan Wilson has left the club on a permanent deal. Wasn't getting games for us. I decided to do similar to what I did with, uh, not Mikhail Djerkov, the other guy, Richard, the striker, Mikhailov. That guy sent him out to a different club because he's going to get better. Like, he's going to turn that team better. I've nailed that. You understood what I'm talking about, right? Full strength. We are actually back to full strength. We've got no suspensions to worry about. We've got no major injury problems either. So it's going to be Kristaps Zommers in goal. David Titov, who for some reason is worth £400,000. I don't know why he's worth so much money. Everyone else is like eighty to 90000 Frank Del Vugels and Adjamani round off the back four. Samad and Tronikov's in the middle. Taihi, Mikulov and Zavs on the wings. Oleg Gorks is kind of becoming our number one striker. Um, he's as good as Diaby. If we look at Diaby, there's his numbers, and then we do a comparison with Oleg's Gorks. You can see they're, I mean, they're very different types of players, aren't they? Gorks is very fast. He's not very fast. He's actually as quick. He's just got a lot more agility. Basically, what I'm trying to say is Oleg Gorks is Latvian, and I want to play Latvian players over any other nationality. So Oleg Gorks being as good as Karim Diaby means that Gorks is most likely going to be starting a few more games. He hasn't scored for us so far this season. Karim Diaby does have five. So Basel will be obviously the strongest side in our group. I say obviously. I mean, they were the top seeds. We were the second seeds. FH and Ural were third and then fourth seeds. We've beaten the third seeds. I think we're good enough to beat Ural. I don't think we're going to be good enough to beat Basel. We are seven minutes in. We've managed to clear the ball upfield, but it's probably going to come back to us. Vidma with this. Just inside the Skins Academy half. Van Leberg, maybe. Is that Christian Atsu? It's Palacios. Plays the ball over towards somebody, but Zomos has come out and held on to that one. So the highlight really is starting here with the Latvian keeper. Well, well, come on, buddy. Buddy, wake up. There we go. He's finally done something. Kicked it long over the halfway line. Gorks is going to get on the end of this. Go on, Olegs. Across to Zavs. Into the penalty area. Zavs' effort isn't the best. Goes over the bar. Still nil-nil, but we're looking good. Lee Griffiths has scored for Ural against F8, which means they move up into second place. Sorry, third place. Abdul Samed's corner for us. Troninkovs is there. He's hit the post. Oleg's Gorks is there to mop up the pieces. That's his first goal of the season. We have taken the lead against the Swiss giant of Basel. I mean, this is not what I was expecting. Are we actually going to possibly go through the Europa Conference League group stages? It's something that I wasn't expecting to actually be able to do, particularly this early on. I was expecting, realistically, to be able to get into maybe the Champions League group stages and lose every single game. We've not managed that, but we have consistently got into some form of some form of European competition. It is Basel with the ball. It's upfield, but it's going to get intercepted. Vogels then to Adjamani. Left hand side is Zavs. Loads of space for the aging Latvian. I say aging, he's 31. He's still younger than me by a fair distance. Vidma forward, finds Christian Atsu who can run down that right-hand side. Palacios now, he's going to burn a bit of pace to get into the middle of the, sp of the pitch. Sure, that'll do. Christian Atsu's goal. I mean, I said Christian Atsu's goal out loud. I wasn't expecting it to go in. I was expecting it to be a shot on target and saved by Zomers, and Zomers just let it roll underneath him. They've had one shot on target with an XG of 0 0.04, and it went in. I mean, if, if XG is any bigger of a lie, that's kind of proof there, isn't it? David Titov with the ball, the former, I think, Barnsley man. 
It's Taihi. He's got some runners. Miklov is one of them. He's just taking his time, though, at the moment. He's managed to get break away and make some space for himself. Running off to the left, gets tackled, but Zavs now has this ball. Gorks needs this. Plays it to Gorks, and Gorks' first time shot is into the top corner. And with 1 minute and 20 seconds left to play of injury time in the first half, we are back in front. I kind of feel a bit justified to be playing Oleg's Gorks. I said at the start of the match that he hadn't scored any goals. He's as good, maybe, as Abdul Karim Diaby. He's scored twice so far. We are winning a game that arguably we are not good enough to be winning, let alone even sort of being competitive in. And uh, yeah, we're 2-1 up. Something I have noticed this season, Taihi has been garbage. Outside of the league, he has been absolutely shocking. We're going to bring on Zongo. If you take a look, his last few matches. So, he gets a 6.4 against Ventspils, a 7.1 against FH, a 9.4 scores 4 goals against Dogford Pills, and then you can see against Karabag, 6-5 and a 6-3, 6-1 against Olympiacos, 6-4 and a 6-5 against Mulder. He's all over the place. Luckily for us, our attack-minded players and, I guess, midfielders are doing the job for us because defensively, Titov, Adjumani and Vogel all not doing so well at the moment. Obviously, Zongo just comes onto the pitch. He's not really doing much either. We've got just under 10 minutes to play. Now, what do, what do we do here? We do tee top off for Taigui. That could be a big risk. We are 2-1 up. I'm going to do one sub now. I'm going to play for about five minutes. And then we're going to do another time-wasting substitution around 87. That will do perfectly. Gox is coming off for Diaby. As all of our changes. We are 2-1 up away from home against Basel in the Europa Conference League. Time is ticking away. They've had two shots. Three shots all game. We've won the match. We've picked up the three points. And importantly as well, we've picked up, I think, 0.5 of a coefficient point as well. Which is actually a massive number. Oleg's Gorks shines. Look at that. Right, let's do this then. Let's take a look. Let's take a look at the coefficients. So we are currently 30th. We are now on a 3.5 for next season. I think that's actually a 0.75 we've picked up for that. I'm not sure what the number was before, but we were on like a 15.2, maybe. Something like that. We are flying. Absolutely flying up. Where are we going to go to? My guess is 26th. It is 26th. It is actually to where Israel currently sits. What does that mean for this? So if we move up to 26th, is that going to do any changes? It... It's a very big change, actually. It moves everyone into qualifying round two. We're still a long way away from here, which is 15th. That's the big one. That is obviously where we get two teams in the Champions League, a Europa League team, and two teams in the Europa Conference League. But anyway, we've got to go forward. We've got to play about four games. Most of them are in the Cup. We've got Spartax and Levon in the league. We've got Lorona Rita and Spartax 2 in the Cups. We'll be back for the Euro match, which I hope... We might win that one as well. So we were supposed to play four matches in between our two Europa Conference League games. Instead, we played two and we've lost another league game, a 1-0 defeat against Spartax. We then beat La Rona Rita 4-0 in the Winter Cup second round. The other matches, the Spartax 2 game was postponed due to international football, I believe it was. It was a bit weird. We lost half of our team for about four days, so they've just come back now. And also it was, who else was it going to be? Levon. So, I think which has been moved all the way down here, potentially, or even maybe New Year's Day, and that was postponed because of a, a damp pitch, I think? I'm not sure. But because of that, the league table doesn't look particularly good at the moment. We do have a game in hand over quite a few of the sides, but we are also six points off the top of the table with two defeats to our name, which is already one more defeat, I think, than we had last season, wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah, that's, I mean... As long as we don't go to five very quickly, this it's not good. Anyway, back to the Europa Conference League, and it is Ural of Russia that we are going to be playing. It will be the same back four and goalkeeper as the previous match. It's going to be a change in midfield. Sergei's counter comes in because Salas Abdul Samad has picked up too many yellow guards, so he's going to be suspended. Everybody else remains the same with Taihi, Mikhailov, Zavs, and Oleg's Gorks. I'm thinking, and this could be a risk... He doesn't do so well as an inside forward on support. Do we do that? Is that, I mean, is that going to make any difference? We're going to try it, see what happens. 
So, if we win here, we will be top of the group with nine points in the bag, which is huge. Everyone else, most could be on six. I guess if Basel win their game, they could go on to six points. We'll be at the top on nine, and we're probably only one game away from actually qualifying for the next round. We've got the ball in the penalty area already, apparently, at the start of the highlight. Adjamani to Zavs. He's been tackled. Adjamani's going to not get there first. Instead, it's going to be a penalty. That'll do. Because it's Europe, we do get ourselves some VAR, but it does look like it is going to be a penalty. And apparently, Frank Dow is going to be taking our penalty. So the 18-year-old Ivorian central defender steps up. It's a very good penalty. Very calm for a centre-back to take a penalty like that. I'm very happy. We're 1-0 up already against Ural. We are top of the group. Nine points out of a possible nine if it stays this way. Ah, yes, Ural were the weird side that had lots of silly players, didn't they? Maxim Trupo Mateng is also playing alongside Lee Griffiths. Was it anybody else, or was that all they've got? Griffiths' corner comes in. The goal scorer, Dow, clears it. Vershinin is going to pick this ball up. Plays it back to the former Celtic man. He's played in the middle. I feel like we are going to steal this away and do a little bit of a counter-attack. Strandberg. Stefan Strandberg. I think he is also one of their real players. They've only got four. Starostin. To this man's name, who also might be a real player, but I don't know how to pronounce his name, so we're not even going to try. Left-hand side is their fullback. He's got some company in front of him. They man they're still passing it around. I feel like there's a goal. Yes, it's there. It's not a goal. He's offside. That was, that was close. Apart from the goal that has been disallowed, Ural have literally not had a shot. Even though they technically did, but because it got called back, it didn't count as a shot. We are 1-0 up at half-time. They've done nothing. Um, I feel like we should be doing better. We've had very little highlights so far of this game. We're going to do no changes. Looks like Ural have done something. I don't know what that's done. Maybe possibly change to their formation. I'm happy Lee Griffiths is on a 6.2. Chupo Mateng is on a 6.4. Just after the hour mark, and we've finally got ourselves another highlight. Taihi with this ball, playing as an inverted winger today. Kicks it straight into the keeper's hands, and that, that was rubbish. Right, let's do ourselves a change. Gorx is going to come off for Karim Diaby. He's not done so well in this match, as, as opposed to the match against Basel, where he was actually pretty good, wasn't he? Do we do anything else? I don't think we do. I'm looking at players like Juris Kramens, who is just 17 years old, and I'm thinking, is now the time to give him a chance? No, we're only 1-0 up. If we were 2-0 up, I probably would. But at 1-0, all it takes is one chance. And this could be that one chance. It is Ural coming forward with the ball. It's a slight tackle, but it still managed to find its way to an orange shirt. Plays it back on the right-hand side now. Adjamani's with him. Steal it. Steal. Don't foul him. Steal it. Don't foul him. He's played it on the floor. Zoma saves it. Vogels really should have got there first. But we got a bit lucky there. The Latvian keeper, the Latvian international goalkeeper, preventing that from going in. Lee Griffiths having a shocking game so far. Crosses that ball in. Vogels clears. That's probably going to end the highlight. It hasn't. It's not It's not ended the highlight. Zavs has cleared it. That might do it. Well, this isn't ideal, is it? Taihi has picked up a hand injury. You're a winger, mate. You, your hands aren't a problem, are they? Right, we're going to change you back over to be an inside forward on support. We're going to obviously bring on Zongo. Do we do another change? I think we do, similar to what we did against Basel, where we just kind of wait for time and then do our third and final sub for a bit of time wasting. This will do. And we are going to do Kramens coming on. It's going to be Yanis Vogels. Sure, Vogels is going to come off for Kramens. Don't, don't do something silly like score a goal. I mean, Kramens still isn't on the pitch at the moment. It's still Vogels, as far as I can tell. Dow to counter. Back to Frank Dow. I feel like this is one of those highlights that's happening because of the subs. But it might not be. Diaby's in on goal. Diaby's hit the post. Should be 2-0. Five minutes of injury time to play. Ural are actually starting to have a few chances now. But none of them have been any good, apparently. We win 1-0. 22 shots we had. Seven of them on target. And we win thanks to a penalty. I guess it, it's, it's a win, isn't it? It's three more points. It's more coefficient points as well. So I think so far this season in Europe, yes, I wanted Europa League. Arguably being in the Europa Conference League might be a little bit better for us because we're actually picking up a lot more coefficient points. Young Skins Academy shine against Ural, a 1-0 victory. That is good to see. The Latvia boss is taking a look at Zomers, Titov, Vugels, Mikulov, Kauna, Tronikov, Zavs and Oleg's Gorks, who, by the way, has literally just turned 17, like about a month ago, not even a month ago. But yeah, so uh, we've, we've got a bunch of children 
and quite a few of them might be playing for Latvia very soon. We do kind of need to start performing again in the league, which I'm thinking we might flip-flop. So we might have a really good season in Europe and have a poor season in the league, and then the next season we'll have a really poor season in Europe but have a really good season in the league. That might be what's going to happen. Let's take a look at the coefficient points. We are. I feel like we are moving up. We are moving up to 26th by the looks of it, 4.0. We have almost doubled at the points that we are losing currently. We've obviously still got three more Europa Conference League games to play. Hopefully two of them we're going to win as well. This season might be our best season ever in Europe. A 16.875 for next season. We are getting closer and closer to having a few more teams in European competitions. Next episode, we are going to have a repeat of this URL game and we're also going to have FH because if we win both of those or if we win possibly just one of those, we will be going through to the next round. So the group stages are effectively over. We've actually got a 100% record in the group stages. I don't think there are too many teams that have that. Thank you very much for watching this episode of Football Manager 2021 with Latvia Building a Nation, obviously. If you did enjoy, do please remember like button, subscribe button. If you're new to the channel, you can ding the notification bell. You can stick all your comments down in the comments section below. We are continuing in the Europa Conference League in the next episode and continuing to hopefully climb the coefficients as well. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.